I had the distinct pleasure of sitting at the feet of Dr. Romney Mosley in 1979, my final year of seminary at Codrington College. He was the guest lecturer in a course taught by our mutual mentor, Dr. Cotwright Davis. Having heard about his work all these years later, I can say that I saw the seed that bore such fruit 43 years ago. A year after his death, I was appointed to serve at the church where he died. I'm happy to say that I am one of those upon whom his mantle fell. I'm now pleased to introduce the Reverend Randy Williams, Dr. Anita Gittins, and Professor Davis himself to pay tribute to this priest scholar activist, the Reverend Dr. Romney McIver Mosley. This year, 2022, marks the 30th anniversary of the death of the Reverend Dr. Professor Romney Samuel McIver Mosley. When our committee agreed that we should celebrate successes in the Black community during this year's service, there was unanimous agreement that we should mark Dr. Mosley's contributions to the life and mission of the Anglican Church of Canada. Romney Mosley was born on September 25th, 1943 in Barbados, where he received his formative elementary and secondary education. One of his mentors, the Reverend Canon Dr. Professor Cotwright Davis, described his early life this way. He grew up in the parish of Christ Church as a normal, well-rounded Caribbean boy. He enjoyed almost all the rights and privileges of Caribbean ecological, sociological, and institutional life. Church, school, family, sports, beaches, girlfriends, and various forms of cultural creativity all played a significant part in his human development. Upon leaving his high school, Harrison College, Romney enrolled in Boston University, where he graduated in 1968 as a biology major. Many of his mentors and elders wanted that bright young man to pursue medicine, but young Romney always felt a call to the priesthood. After graduating from Boston University, he entered Harvard Divinity School, where in 1971, he graduated with a B.D., magna cum laude. Seven years later, Romney earned a Ph.D. in religion and society from Harvard. The title of his doctoral thesis was Religious Conversion, a Structural Development Analysis. He was mentored in that work by renowned 20th century theologian, James Fowler and H. Richard Newber. Subsequently, Dr. Mosley accepted appointments at the University of Virginia. 1975 to 1980, at Candler School of Theology at Emory University, 1981 to 88, and at Trinity College, Toronto, 1988 to 1992. Most of his teaching, research, writing, and presentations were in the area of theology and human development. He contributed several monograph chapters, articles, and reviews addressing issues of faith development and religious transformation. While at Candler in Atlanta, Georgia, he also expanded his scope to focus on people of color. Always wanting an academic challenge, Dr. Mosley spent a year at the Interdenominational Theological Center, a predominantly Black seminary 
that served mainly black churches. That restint provided an invaluable opportunity in beginning to appropriate his theological and psychological ideas to the distinctive culture of the black church. After consideration, he strongly advocated for the development of transformational leadership in the black church. It was not long before Dr. Mosley was wooed to teach in Canada at the University of Toronto. As Associate Professor of Divinity at Trinity College, he taught in the area of ethics and society, where he focused on issues of suffering, of evil, and on a loving God. Ever mindful of his Atlanta experience, he joined other Caribbean theologians in the fundamental tenet that the core of the Christian gospel is freedom from all forms of oppression. That also meant within the Anglican Church of Canada. Dr. Mosley had the opportunity to also exercise priestly ministry in several parishes, but in particular, the parish of St. Michael and All Angels in Toronto. It was while presiding at the Eucharist, which he loved and felt called to as a young man, that he collapsed and died at the altar. On the Feast of the Visitation on May the 31st, 1992, he was 48 years old. At the time of his death, an announcement was about to be made that he had been appointed to an endowed chair in pastoral theology at Princeton Theological Seminary, a coveted position that he never filled. His brief time in Toronto will long be remembered because of the report submitted to the General Synod of the Anglican Church of Canada in June 1992. This report, with recommendations, accompanied by a study guide, formed the basis for the church's policy on multiculturalism. Unfortunately, he did not have the opportunity to present the report to General Synod. It was published two years after his death with the title, No Longer Strangers. As a result of his work and with General Synod's endorsement, many dioceses in Canada established committees, similarly named No Longer Strangers. It was the leadership role of those committees to read, to study, and to pursue the recommendations made in the report. They in turn would educate others. In his four short challenging years at Trinity College, Dr. Mosley distinguished himself as a scholar, deep thinker, and a man of faith. He had a tremendous influence and impact on his students. The courses he offered were often oversubscribed, attracting students from many different backgrounds and religious denominations who were interested in his approach to congregational analysis and theological ethics. He was described as the articulate and respected spokesperson for the growing number of parishioners of West Indian origin in the Canadian church. Today, we remember the Reverend Dr. Professor Romney Samuel McIver Mosley with deep affection. And we are indebted to him, not only for his academic and pastoral contributions, wherever he served, but also for the Christian witness he lived as a priest. In the inaugural Romney Mosley Memorial Lecture, sponsored by Trinity College and reproduced in his recent book, We Belong to Big Church, Dr. Mosley's mentor and close friend, the Reverend Canon Dr. Professor Cartwright Davis, says this of Mosley. In addition to being a scholar of considerable repute and outstanding characteristics, Romney Mosley always took his sense of vocation to the sacred priesthood very seriously. He enjoyed the rites and ceremonies 
of Ecclesia Anglicana, especially whenever he made his return visits to the Caribbean. The life of the priest was intricately and intimately woven into the very fabric of Romney's spiritual, moral, and professional life. His untiring efforts to offer compassionate guidance, pastoral care and counseling, professional insights to fellow priests, and theological leadership in critical areas of discernment were all part of the ministry in which his soul would often delight. Dr. Davis opines that Romney's greatest contribution to the social discourse in Canada was his seminal work on Christian ministry in a multicultural society. We, meanwhile, continue to be disappointed about the discontinuation of the Romney Mosley Lecture Series. It has been said that though Romney passed through many a fire in Canada, he lit a fire under the Anglican Church of Canada. His legacy lives on. Much work remains to be done. Our church must continue to encourage dioceses to be more intentional in executing the recommendations of the Romney Report, no longer strangers. If it is sincere in its commitment to being an inclusive church where no one is made to feel that they're strangers. In doing this, we can honor his groundbreaking transformative work and memory. We give thanks to God for Dr. Mosley's life, his work and witness. We remember him with eternal gratitude for it is because of his contribution while on his earthly pilgrimage that our lives and those of his family, friends and acquaintances have been blessed. We conclude this tribute to Dr. Mosley using his own words as he responded to a question about the contribution of oppressed peoples to the debate around faith and its development. Dr. Mosley said, they were the voices that call for changes in theological discourse to accommodate the experiences of injustice and oppression of women and non-whites from the so-called third world. These voices rail against the partialization of the Amago Day, the image of God, by those who are bent on preserving an intransigent patriarchy and a sexist and racist fragmentation of the human community. There are also those countless souls broken by economic and political oppression. From his words, Dr. Mosley was attuned to the hearts of the broken and the oppressed, for he himself was one of them. The Reverend Dr. Professor Romney Samuel MacGyver Mosley continues to be grieved by his wife, Joan, and his daughter, Julia, his family, numerous friends, colleagues, and students. The epitaph on his gravestone says it all. Romney Samuel MacGyver Mosley was a faithful priest, father, husband, scholar, counselor, friend. May he rest in peace and rise with Christ in glory. My dear sisters and brothers in the Lord, I first wish to thank the Black Anglicans of Canada for this invitation and privilege to share in this special service of sacred memory for my late friend and brother and colleague, the Reverend Dr. Romney Mosley. As many of you know, Romney was a very close friend of mine ever since we first met at St. Bartholomew's Anglican Church in Christchurch, Barbados, on one of his visits to his homeland. I was the rector of that parish at the time. Our relationship grew exponentially in so many parallel ways, and we developed a very strong bond of theological, ecclesial, and ministerial connections, which somehow benefited me 
much more than it did him. For that, I am eternally grateful. Among other things, it liberated me from my resistance to what at that time was known as the Caribbean brain drain. And it afforded my family and myself the incentive to launch out into the widest spheres of knowledge and opportunity and professional development and vocational fulfillment. We have never regretted it. Along the way, Romney and I collaborated in several avenues of academic and intellectual stimulation while engaging several groups and institutions with an evolving vision of spiritual transformation, faith development, and above all, cultural identities and moral integrity towards social justice and human freedom. His seminal work in the Anglican Church of Canada had been preceded by his many initiatives south of the border. But the debilitating scourges of racism and white supremacy always hovered over his genuine efforts to find spaces for personal growth and intellectual honesty. By the time of his death, Romney had fully discovered that those two scourges really had no national boundaries. So that whether it was in Atlanta or Toronto or Cambridge or New Jersey, to be black and blessed was not a guarantee of being fully accepted as being fully human. All of us whom God has blessed with ebony grace share in that universal crucible of human dissonance. Nevertheless, in this Black History Month, we join with all those who genuinely live into the irrevocable faith that when God created us black, 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 God saw what God had made and said, what a good God am I, how beautiful they are, how blessed they are, how wonderful they can become. Romney lived into all this, and his book that he entitled Becoming a Self Before God was matched throughout his life with the assurance that God was still becoming his God before his own face and within the channels of his own interior spirit. Justice and truth and compassion and peace and human wholeness were therefore the main characteristics of his work and witness and he sought earnestly to bring the church to that place where none would be strangers to each other within the mystical body of Christ. We therefore give thanks for his life, his work, and his fervent witness. We thank God for the continuing influence of his ministry and legacy in the Anglican Church of Canada and for the ongoing efforts towards intercultural inclusivity and mutual acceptance within the church. We pray for God's guidance on the work and witness of the Black Anglicans of Canada and for the seeds of growth and hope which are being planted day by day. We give thanks for the fertile memory of Romney as God's gift to all of us. We continue to pray for his widow their daughter and her family, as well as for all those who continue to miss his presence. May he continue to rest in peace and shine in eternal glory with all the saints of God. To God be the glory. Amen. As we end these tributes, to an amazing brother who brought so much to the Anglican Church of Canada and to black communities, let us pray. God of the nations, you call us to share in the life and ministry of your church. Enable us, though different in color, costumes and heritage, to celebrate our oneness in you and the shared inheritance of your kingdom. Prosper our work 
as we endeavor to build bridges of love, understanding, and cooperation that transformed and renewed by your Holy Spirit, we will be no longer strangers to one another, but together as members of your household will always give you glory. Through your son, Jesus Christ, amen. <laughs>